full. So we're live. And then Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Let a few more people get on in and then we'll get started. Sounds good. How's the festival been going so far? Seeming seem to be going pretty good. Um, I want to say, well, this is actually the first, like, I guess, live event, so to speak. Um, I know you had like individual uh, purchase tickets. So instead of just intending everything, they wanted to make sure they saw yours. Um, some uh, was already familiar with it. So they was like, yeah, like that's really good. Like, please make sure you check it out. So um, people are really like tuning in. It's just, you know, definitely when it comes to Arkansas filmmaking, especially people of color, it's, it's, it's fresh. So <laughs> real fresh. So because um, tomorrow we'll have uh, Denise Davis. She'll be coming uh, tomorrow doing uh, producing uh, master class and then um, Mr. Floyd Norman. Are you familiar with him? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The first uh, animator for Disney. So he'll yeah, be. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at six. So cool stuff. And then Saturday, if you if you have free time, we'll be talking to. <laughs> she said new new. <laughs> uh, so Saturday we'll have. Um, what I want to say. Oh, we'll be screening uh, Birth of a Movement. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, gonna have a, <laughs> it's gonna get kind of real Saturday. <laughs> it <out. laughs> it's all leading to something that's great. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay, we got some more logging in, which I think that's the whole crew. So All right, cool. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get started and we'll just let people trickle on in. Sounds good. Cool beans. So uh, for those who do not know who the Justin Warren is, <laughs> <laughs> can you please let us know a little bit about yourself, where you from and um, you know, how did you get to where you are today? 
For sure. Yeah. So uh, first off, I'm really excited to be here. Like, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Uh, thank you guys for screening the film. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Justin Warren. Uh, I'm originally from, born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I lived in Arkansas up to about almost, whoa, I've been out here almost 10 years now. Uh, but I'm in, I've moved to LA uh, and um, I've been out here for, yeah, about 10 years now. It's a very, very smoky LA right now because <laughs> of all the wildfires. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I got my, I got my start uh, making films in literally my, like my backyard in Arkansas. And um, I went to Hendricks College in Conway mm -hmm. and made a lot of short films there. That's how I really kind of got started. Um, I also was a theater major in college. So I uh, learned a lot about playwriting and stuff like that. And then after, after college, after I graduated from college, I decided to uh, go to film school. And so I ended up getting into film school out here. Um, I went to USC out here in California and uh, have since just been on the grind, man, just trying my hardest to, to get films made. Um, you know, like we made Joe uh, uh, a couple of years ago now. And uh, I mean, obviously the world is completely different now, <laughs> you know, uh, everything's different, you know, like they're the, like, we're even, kind of wondering if, if theaters are going to make it through COVID, you know? Uh, right, right. It's kind of a, kind of a weird time, but uh, what's been good about kind of being shut up inside of our homes is like, it kind of gives us all the time to reflect and, and think about our values and the things that, that matter to us. Right. And uh, I think, I think making, making Joe, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, but just a really like very long long process to, to put together a feature film. And uh, it's really arduous and, and you sort of get to the end of it and you're exhausted. And so I feel like the, the last two years, I've just been yeah. really tired. All yeah. the time. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, put put like, uh, like world crisis after world crisis on top of it. And, you know, I feel like the, the last year or so has just been like a, a, a period of deep reflection for me, you know, and uh, I'm I'm excited to report that I still want to make movies, which is great. <laughs> like you, you, you just mentioned, like you, you just finished a, a short film up. Yeah, and I was like, man, I can't wait to get back to making shorts. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm planning a little short to shoot just here in my apartment, like. Uh, just to, just to keep the dream alive, you know. Yeah, yeah. And during COVID, like we have to do everything we can to keep our our dreams alive and and stay right. positive. And like you were saying, take it one day at a time. So yeah, dope, dope. So what what made Justin want to go into film? Like what what brought you um, to I guess the um, the realization? Like man, like this is for me, this is what I want to do. Like what did it for you? That's a great question. I think, I think it was the, the realization that film is like kind of the perfect time capsule in a way, you know, mm. uh, because like film is like that. There's a Peter Jackson quote that I, I try to live by and it's uh, he directed Lord of the Rings, all that good stuff. Um, and it's like, uh, pain is temporary. Film is forever. And I've always that, that always stuck with me. And I'm like, that's really that's a really brilliant idea. You know, it's like uh, movies can be very painful when you're making them, but they live on. They'll they'll hopefully outlast us. You know what I mean? And so I think that that kind of I had a moment in college where I was making a short film, and it was like shortly after I I had done theater and I was in a play and it kind of hit me. I was like, wait, if I do a play, the only people that are going to see it are the people here at the play. You know right, I mean? right, 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 right. And then I was like, wait, hold on. If I film it, you know, then like it can go, it can travel a lot further than me, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, just that, that concept of like creating something that, uh, can travel and mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. can perform without you having to perform it each time uh, is a very you know amazing uh, thing about about film. I mean, like you know, I I go back and I uh, like I watched a I watched a film from like 
the twenties the other day. Like mm -hmm. uh, I rewatched uh, Metropolis by uh, you know Fritz Lang, mm -hmm. and it's from like nineteen twenty, and it's still around. You know, like that's really cool. And uh, you know, so so hopefully, like you know, all of the work that we make, you know, will hopefully be uh, still be relevant in some way, shape, or form moving on in the future. But that's what really got me into film um, was was just the the sense that it's like it's kind of uh, permanent in a way. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. A, a lot of uh, permanency that's really interesting to me, so. Cool, yeah, and, and, and that's a good point because, um, I mean, in good and bad ways, that's, that's where film has kind of played its part, um, especially in, in this country. You know, I was telling you about, like, we're gonna be screening, you know, Birth of a Movement this weekend, which is, you know, influenced from Birth of a Nation, and, oh. You know, you and I both know that how much damage that film did Dude, yeah. to us. Yeah. You know, and we're still recuperating from that now. You know, it's 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 almost kind of like the Willie Lynch, the film version of the Willie Lynch letter, almost. You know? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because like the, the the crazy part about Birth of a Nation is that like that was like the the sad the sad sad part is like that that film was responsible for establishing so much of like our cinematic grammar that we understand, you know what I mean? Of like, you know, a wide shot and then over the shoulders and stuff like that. Like that was kind of the first time that had ever been done. And it's, and it's so sad that the first kind of standard movie we make is basically racist propaganda. You know what I mean? It's like, no. Nah. To, to the max, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man. And so, you know, uh, yeah, it's but 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 it's it's great though that like, you know, uh, filmmakers can have conversations, uh, you know, across time, and that's what's really kind of beautiful about cinema as well. It's like uh, you can constantly be like, yeah, uh, so y'all didn't get that right, and let's talk about it now. You know what I mean? It's it's mm. it's amazing. Yeah, that's like um, uh, my family and I we were watching uh, Heavyweights. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and man, some of the stuff that was being said, some of the things they were wearing, and we was like, oh man, because you forget, you know, like you know, like you know, I'm I grew up in the 90s and you know, I'm thinking about like how things were sensitive then, how they're more accepted now, and some of the things that's not accepted now, you know, it was sensitive then or whatever, like it's kind of them flipped in weird ways. Yeah, yeah. And, um like, yeah, like definitely like, you know, say for instance, like Heavyweight, even though it's a really, you know, great film, but it's just like, man, that would not flow today. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, man, that is that is a really cool concept. And it also shows that, you know, I, you know, especially, you know, you know, growing up in Arkansas, like film and especially arts overall is just not encouraged. And it's almost to the point that it's so look down upon to where you know you it's like you're wasting your time like if you go to college for it or where like what is that going to do to society you should go for engineering or aware of like that and it's it's not that those things are not important but when you really take the time to realize like how much your mindset is affected by the mediums that you expose your mind to you realize like, oh snap like this stuff is important depending on you know, who has control of it. I remember watching a clip, I think it was a clip of uh, Spike Lee's interview. And uh, this is after he got the uh, honorary Oscar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was part of it, what he had said was that, you know, um, the medium is very powerful. I'm paraphrasing the medium is very powerful. And those who um, basically have control of it, control of it or influence of it, you know, they have a responsibility. You know, and, you know, and that's that's conversations that I have with different, you know, friends, you know, some sometimes it's good to laugh, uh, just like, you know, then there was Joe, which we finna, you know, kind of segue our time, our, our way into. But it's just like it's good to laugh, you know, but we have to be careful of what we're laughing at. And it's cool to do things that may not seem as deep or meaningful, but we have to be careful of not giving too much into that because we're we we're just not getting that platform. Like we're just not 
now having the Black Panther. We're just not having a wrinkle in time, you know? So, and what, Birth of a Nation, that was 1915. That's a long time to be fixing. We're just now getting to that moment, you know? And uh, so, yeah. Century later, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> man, man, man. So, okay, so graduate from Hendrix, we go to USC. We we can't just brush over that, you know. You you kind of just yeah, I went to USC. Like talk about that experience before we get into then there was Joe. How was that? Oh man, dude. Uh it was the most uh like for excuse my language, like most kick ass experience <laughs> I've ever I've ever done uh in my life. Like it you know, I so I, I started um I graduated in twenty fourteen. So it's been a few yeah. years, but um like I uh, I basically went from Arkansas to the smack dab center of LA. And that was one of the biggest like culture shocks of my life. Like I, I remember like, the first time just walking on the campus, like the the walk sign counts down from 30. You know what I mean? And you're like, what? 30? <laughs> Why? Like it takes that long to cross the street. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, the streets are gigantic. So crossing mm. the street is like a, a thing, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I just remember like feeling just unbelievably out of place, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a, a fish out of water. But, but the experience was like the most profound learning experience I think of my life in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are so many things that angered me about the experience as well. But, but I think generally um, it, I, I, I sort of, I sort of like, uh, compare film school kind of like to it feels like you're kind of going to hogwarts in a way mm -hmm. it's like you you sort of like go to a place with a whole lot of other people from all around the country who kind of have these like crazy creative powers it feels like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everybody has a completely different perspective on how things should be done and it's like sort of a meeting of the minds uh in a way that is just like truly inspiring uh, like I met some of the most talented filmmakers I've like ever, and and some of them are like actually directing big movies now. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I like I, I went to school with uh, uh, Stephen Cable Jr., who directed like Creed Two, and what? Uh, yeah, and Kugler wow. went. To, uh, Kugler graduated the semester before I went there, um, and so like you know, and a lot of people are coming out and doing some stuff, which is really cool. Everybody's kind of taking their own paths you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely going the more like rugged indie route you know with yeah, a lot of yeah, yeah. uh but it you know the i think the the biggest thing that that i would say that that usc did was was very much sort of demystify film making uh i think in a good way uh because now like whenever i see a film that truly moves me like that that moves me to my core i'm like man this is good like because mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if it made me kind of forget about the filmmaking and get swept up in the story you know like that's the best that is the yeah. absolute best so um mm -hmm. yeah I, I'm, I always try to keep that in the forefront of my mind that everything that that we do is is always to, to try to move people you know what i mean um and and usc was good at helping me figure out like the tools I need to use in order to get people to feel emotion. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and nowadays I, I feel like we are, uh, empathy is like very much, uh, feels like we're almost in like a, an empathy drought or something, you know, in our yeah. society. And, yeah. and so, so anything that we can do to, uh, help us see that we're all connected, and that nobody just lives in a vacuum, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And like uh, that, even though we we may completely disagree on things, we may be completely polarized. Like we are one in the same. We're all we're all the human family, you know? Right, right. And and the the thing that's great about cinema is like cinema is a universal language, you know? Like you don't yeah. have to, you don't have to speak a particular language to understand how a sequence of shots is supposed to affect you. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that's the, the the biggest sort of responsibility that comes mm -hmm. with filmmaking. Like you were you were saying, like you know, Spike Lee was saying, like uh, it's who controls uh, the actual medium itself that really gets to influence culture and and really 
sort of, I hate to, to use this term, but control minds. I mean, it, it really is a form of mind control in many ways, you know, like uh, the, the, the first earliest film schools uh, in Russia were put together uh, for propaganda because they, like the Russian government realized like, oh my goodness, this is the greatest medium ever for, for influencing people, you know what I mean? And so like the first Russian film schools were like Eisenstein and all those guys, they straight up were like, this is for controlling people's minds. And they, you know, then explored the medium to see how far you can push it into influencing society, influencing culture. And that's why the media is so powerful because, you know, it's the moving image. There's kind of nothing more powerful than the moving image, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And definitely when you can relate uh, to that person in the screen or, that one experience that you've been going to going through internally and you see it on screen and, and it breaks you or or it it connects with you on like a deeper level from you know kids you know little watching lion king and you know thinking about adventure or whatever uh to us getting older and we look back on lion king and it's still uh relative in a sense of you know man i i did feel like at one point i was lost uh, I lost my way or whatever, and and now I'm trying to get back to what's promised to me and and what's there for me and what I'm built for, you know, um, and and it, and it's that time castle thing. Like if you look back, you always be able to get something different from that um, that you can resonate with, and, and it just takes you to another level, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really dope. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm very interested. And those who uh, attend grad school, you know, for, for film school uh, and grad school or whatever, because I was considering it at the time. I graduated out of uh, undergrad in 15. Mm-hmm. So um, I was thinking about it and then I was kind of discouraged uh, and everything like that. And that's what led me, you know, to higher ed. But the mindset was, OK, if I'm going to do this, you know, kind of like you were saying, you know, the whole full out indie route is that, you know, if I'm doing this daytime, this is paying the bill so I can do what I can do. Right, right. That kind of thing, you know. Right. So, um, but yeah, and, but the good thing, what I do during the daytime, it, it helps me get by because I feel like it's aligned with my purpose, just like I feel like film initially, you know, was. And so, you know, that helps out. But that's pretty dope. So, um, man, and it's crazy. Uh, I always tell the story. Um my first film festival and my first time flying was in 2016. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my first time in Florida was in 2016 at the uh, American Black Film Festival, which I oh, really, yeah, yeah. really wanted to go to. Mm-hmm. And uh, my wife and I, we were sitting off to the side and uh, I saw this guy, he had like big hair and he was just walking by. He looked my way and you know the guy thing, we look at each other like they're welcoming like, what's up brother? You know. <laughs> And, you know, just kind of like a nod head and went on. And then fast forward, it was Steven. And oh, nice. <laughs> and I'm like, it's, it's a small my, world, man. Wow. Yeah, man. It's just like, like, I'm like you now, excuse my language. If I would have got my ass up and just went over and spoke, you know, hey, that would have been my mentor, you know. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just funny. So, but I, I really love, like, you know, Steven's style and, and Ryan's style, I feel like that's their style of uh, directing and storytelling is definitely, you know, what I connect with the most. Um, honestly, past like, you know, just just some others. I know like, you know, Steven Spielberg, uh, I, I like his style more so because. Um, um, what story is that? Uh, Schindler's List, that actually did it for me as a filmmaker. Like when I started out like. So you can do that with film because I thought that was a recording that I was watching, not a remake or a, or a biopic, so to speak. You know, so um, so yeah, so that's that's really dope. So then there was Joe. When when did this come about? Did this come about during grad school? Was that that one first feature that you always want to do, or um, or was this something like after grad school, you know, you know, like, hey, man, like this is something to this, you know, what, how did it come about? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a rite of passage, I guess, for for people to, 
you know, put together a feature. And so I, I knew coming out of grad school, I actually, I actually passed up on, on doing a, a thesis film at USC to save the money to do a, a, a an indie, you know, indie warrior feature, <laughs> if you will. And uh, so like that had always been on my mind. Uh, even when I, when, I, when I started school, I was like, okay, I'm going to make a feature. I'm gonna try and do it as soon as I can after school. Cause like the, the crazy part is like it, at least it, you know, I, I, I think there might be a little bit of truth to this, but I, I'm, I'm, cha- I'm starting trying to challenge my own beliefs, <laughs> but uh, basically like right after school, uh, for some reason I was thinking like, dude, if I don't get a feature off the ground in the next couple of years, it's probably just going to get harder, you know? Uh, because people, you know, you know, I'm married now. I, I, you know, we're thinking about having kids, all that sort of stuff, you know? And you're like, man, like, how do you keep fitting, you know, filmmaking into it? Because filmmaking is such a unbelievably time consuming process, you know? Right. And, uh, so I've just been, I've been trying my, my best to, uh, just continue to, uh, God, I forgot my, my, my train. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> what was I talking about? I was saying, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> you <laughs> basically, you was trying to, um, you were saying how you was try you was challenging your thoughts of just thinking at the time that if I don't get a feature, like it's going to be right. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I definitely understand. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And so, so I was like, dude, if I don't do this ASAP, like, you know, um, it, it may not happen. And so uh, I just sort of, I feel like I, I didn't have much of a plan to get it done. I just willed it to existence through like roots, like stubborn strength. This is what it felt like, you know? Yeah. 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 Because like when I started making the movie, I, I didn't have any money. I didn't have uh, hardly anything. I just like started before I was ready. And that's like the biggest lesson that I learned making the movie is like, you just have to like make a move. You just have to jump and just know that a parachute or a trampoline will appear. And it's usually will appear at the last second. Like when you're like, oh, we're about to hit the ground and then suddenly you're like oh oh never mind we're okay you know yeah yeah and, yeah and so uh the the first thing i did for for joe was uh i actually started like trying to cast the movie before i had any because i was like okay well i'm gonna try and get at least half the equation because i because i've learned that to get a movie done you need to have a script yeah. you need to have uh an actor and a date, <laughs> you know, and hopefully some money, you know, so you can right. actually do it. Right. Uh, but I was like, okay, I, I, I wrote the script pretty quickly. I wrote it in uh, over the course of like maybe two or three months. Uh, it, it came together pretty, pretty fast. Um, and then I was like, okay, I've got a script. Um, then I started casting. You can cast, you can start casting a project for pretty cheap if you do it yourself, <laughs> you know, right. just put up casting notices and like, just be prepared to, to see a lot of people and have to do all the narrowing down of the actors pretty much yourself. Right. Uh, right. So I started doing that. And then the last thing was like, okay, I need money. Uh, so I, I turned to Kickstarter mm-hmm. and uh, we ended up raising, I think it was like $35,000 uh, to shoot, uh, to shoot the, the film. And, uh, we raised, we raised all of like, I, I also like, didn't think that was possible. I want to, I want to be clear about that. I, I didn't once think like, Oh, I got this. Like it was a, it was a, uh, it was a very, very, uh, not glamorous process. It was incredibly, uh, it was like two steps forward, three steps back one step to the side, you know, it was not a straight linear process really at all. And so I, I launched, I launched the Kickstarter. Um, and I, I remember I, I called my dad right before I launched it and I was like, Hey dad, I think this is a really bad idea. And he was like, he was like, well, well son, what, what's your goal? And I was like, uh, 30,000 bucks. He was like, why don't you make it 33,000? And I was like, what? 
He was like, well, if you're going to do it, son, like do it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. And so I changed it at the last minute. I changed it to 33,000 bucks because 33 okay. is like a lucky number in our family. And okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so I I changed it and then I, I launched the Kickstarter and I immediately felt like I had to throw up. Like I was like, this is this was so dumb because Kickstarter is all or nothing. Like if you don't if you don't raise the entire budget, uh, you don't get any of it. Mm. Um, and I and I remember that feeling at the time like a, a big risk because like it's it's a very public uh thing you know you're always posting yeah. on social media like give me money please you know basically. yeah 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 you're just basically just begging for money you know uh for for a long time and uh you know and luck luckily by the grace of god we we got the money you know mm -hmm. and uh you know it, it was in super tiny micro donations from like tons of of friends and family basically and uh, so then after that, um, once we had the money, um, I like my, I, I had made the plan to go back to Arkansas and shoot the film in the home that I grew up in, which is my parents' house. Basically moved back in with my parents. Um, and, and so I, I brought like a few of my friends from school back home to Arkansas. We moved back in my parents' house. We lived there for like three months um, in my parents' house you know like friends sleeping on couches and all sorts of things to to try to make the film and uh and luckily my parents were super uh supportive about it like that that's one thing i i, I must admit like i i got very fortunate uh because my parents have always supported me like you were saying you know how how uh living in some some spots like like arkansas it is difficult to find a lot of encouragement for making things, you know? And then, so what usually happens is your, is your friends and your family have to be your sources of inspiration. They have to be the people that push you when you have moments of doubt. And I'm a professional worrier. That's all that I do really is worry, <laughs> you know? And uh, so I was like, okay, well, you know, my, so my, my parents uh, pushed me a lot and supported me a lot through the process of making the film, like literally, as in terms of giving up their home and emotionally and and stuff like that, as I was making the film, uh, the film itself was pretty uh, was actually really fun to make, super fun. Um, there, like, there were times where I felt like, um, and I've definitely been on film shoots and film sets where it's been very very fun. Uh, on the film set itself, but then the actual movie usually isn't very good. <laughs> and mm. and sometimes I've been on sets where where it's not fun at all, um, and it's almost kind of miserable. And the movie turns out amazing. Um, and I've never been on a set where both things happened, where you were having fun behind the camera, and the movie turned out pretty well. And I think mm. with Joe, I think we kind of lucked out. You know, I don't know if 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 anybody else thinks it turned out well, but I, I think it turned out all right, considering how, <laughs> how, uh, how little money we had and how little yeah. resources we had. Um, yeah. The fact that it turned out watchable was, I was just like, all right, you know, like, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, like, uh, I feel like the only way I got through it was just like through a, a, a very supportive uh, network of friends and family, so. Dope, 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 dope. So like, uh, man, two, two or three months, like you motivated me because I'm getting ready to start um, writing on a couple of features myself. So, okay, I'm accepting, I'm gonna accept that challenge, okay? <laughs> Get back with you. So, one, piece, one piece of advice I would give you, right? Uh, so uh, so I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing a new script right now and it has been a, a very, very uh, crazy up and down process that I think has has mirrored the up and downs of just like lockdown life. You know, uh, yeah. I would say if anything, like make 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 your process as simple as possible. Simplicity is key. Oh my god! Because like you know, uh, like writing a, a feature is like a, it's a beast. You know what I mean? It's a you got to keep so many things in line. Um, and I think my process during COVID kind of broke down. And so I, I kind of went through a writer's block for a little while. And I, and that, that's kind of unusual for me. 
Mm -hmm. Um, But I went through a block and it it was because my process broke down. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so if anything, um, I, I, I would, I would just say like, uh, be as as mindful as you can about it. And like when you're writing, if it feels hard, then like it's okay to stop for a minute and like think about what you're doing and go gather some more uh, information or sources of inspiration you can draw from. Uh, but the process should feel fun. <laughs> yeah, and it yeah, yeah. Should feel sane. It should be <laughs> sane, you know. And uh, I learned that the hard way because I basically forgot to I forgot how to write during COVID. And it was like mm. such a hard uh, process just to get back on the horse. And I feel like I'm back on the horse now. And that's because I'm like, oh, yeah, how do you write something? It's literally just the secret is you take it one word at a time. But yeah. I'm saying that to you mostly as a reminder to myself. So. <laughs> No, I mean it makes sense because like all I've done is um is shorts. Um, you know, all I've done as far as like trying to like when I see that Sundance uh competition open up or that competition, I'm like Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Type it up real quick, you know. I've, sure. I've you know <laughs> went over and and of course I have you know things in mind and, and I will be honest and, and people you know sometimes laugh. You know, I, I do have like a set amount that I just want to write, stick to, and it may or may not just be it for me, um, unless it's like someone is reaching out to me because they want me to, to direct, you know, a feature for them or short, whatever the case may be. Um, just because it's like, I feel like that gift is a blessing and I want to make sure that I'm utilizing that in the best way first before I just jump off and just be doing all kinds of things, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. So during my first short, I um, I don't even know how long it. Oh, I don't know how long it took me to write, but I, I wrote it, and I thought I was gonna be to some type of way film every everything. I guess it was around like maybe nineteen pages. Film everything my two or three weeks. You know, mm-hmm. I'm in undergrad while it's my last semester. <laughs> yeah. With friends that I know uh, who also are great, majority of the cast are seniors as well. Some type of way I thought that was going to work. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right? And so that went away. Footage has just been sitting out to the side. And then I started grad school that fall. That fall and um, recast, filmed it. And literally, oh, I was filming it and I had maybe like a montage scene and one little sh- short scene that I need to film. And I literally have been promoting my short film maybe like for two weeks, right? Mm-hmm. I was screening at ULR, but my film wasn't done, right? Right, yes, I know that feeling. <laughs> and so I'm like, but it's gonna happen. And literally I filmed, like my last time filming was like 12, like when I sat down and looked at the laptop before I started editing, it was the night before. Well, nice. like 12, 04, 12, 15, something like that. Now I was smart enough to uh, edit the scenes together. Mm-hmm. And oh, that's easy. All I gotta do is just collapse it together. No, no, no. <laughs> Man, I literally, I was editing from 12 that morning, which is the day of the screening. I was adding from then and i think the first draft the first export of the first draft came out around like 2 p.m Mm -hmm. so straight and i didn't think i was going to finish so that leads me to this what similar similar moment came about during the filming process or maybe even post to where you like i'm finna mess up like this is not going to go right. Dude. Oh my God. Like there's so many of those moments. (laughs) And, and I'm beginning to realize, like, I I think that those moments are a part of the creative process as I, as I do this more and kind of go through the, because every, every creative process has a, has a phase, you know what I mean? Like, have you seen, uh, there's like this, this, uh, this thing on the internet where it's like the, it's like, 
the the emotion is graphed on like a like a yeah a, your excitement on a project and it's like this is the greatest thing ever and then you start making you're like oh no what have i done and then that it, it just keeps going down yeah uh, and then like you come through the other side and you're like oh okay well i guess it's not that bad you know uh um, right. like like i i would say uh like the key moment that that happened on this movie is like when we got to post production um we were we had an investor pull out at the at the last second like they 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 were about to give us a, a sizable amount of money to finish the movie and i would have been able to finish it relatively comfortably um well at the last second they were like hey you know we love you but we don't, we don't think film's a great investment and i was like okay that's fair <laughs> That's fair, like, because uh, film's not the best investment until it is, until it's right. the best investment. Right. <laughs> right. right. You know, and so, uh, like, I, I, I remember uh, having that phone call uh, with this investor, and like, that was like my, that was my ace in the hole. I was like, uh, and so when that, when the investment fell through, I literally was like. I have hours and hours and hours of footage on my hard drive. I've got uh, like tons and tons of sound clips and things like that. How the hell am I going to get this movie done? You know? Right. And so like, it was, it was like one of the hardest things I've ever done, but I just like literally rolled up my sleeves and started sinking the footage myself. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And so like, literally and, and what's crazy about working on a feature is like everything is you know especially when when you're when you're indie and don't have a lot of money like everything is so uh you pretty much have to do everything yourself more or less yes yes for sure and uh and then, yeah, <laughs> and then whenever you you do a feature the crazy part is like i i think features are actually exponentially harder than than uh, shorts, just in the sense of like uh, how long the process goes on for. Cause like, it's sort of mentally challenging because you're like, oh my gosh, I have, like for instance, it took me, it took me like two weeks just to sync the footage of, of the, the film. Like two weeks of sitting in my bedroom, you know, in the dark, being like, no, I gotta, I gotta get this going, you know. Um, it just took forever, and uh, wow. and so then, and then for for the longest time, I was editing the film by myself, and and I started to realize like that's a terrible idea. Why, why am I doing this? And uh, like, I think the, the the moment of of realizing a way forward was realizing that like there's a bunch of different types of currency in the world, right? So there's right. money, there's time, uh, and then there there are you can barter for things. Right, you know? right, right. And so I I realized like okay, well if I don't really have a lot of money, um, how can I move forward? How can I use what I have to try to move this thing forward as as best I can? So uh, I've I've always I've I've always uh, been a uh, a consistent writer. Like I I, I have a like a a writing habit that I've been uh, doing consistently for almost 10 years now. Right. right so, right. so I was like, okay, well, what if I just try and hit up one of my friends who's a professional sound designer and be like, yo, can I write something for you in exchange for you doing sound work on my film? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so luckily I, I found, uh, I found a buddy of mine, who uh, had always had this this uh, feature idea in his head, but just didn't know how to get it out. And I was mm -hmm. like, I will write you a script if you do sound work on my movie. And uh, we made that trade, and like it it worked out great. Like that, that movie is now in post, which is like really cool. Um, but like I I was so locked in uh, at first to to this very uh, I think toxic idea this this idea that like i have to have money in order to do something and you know that's the way that kind of america oh i think generally thinks definitely definitely but 
that is not true. <laughs> you don't have to have money to do great things. Um, it helps. It helps so much. Uh, but if you don't have it, there is a way forward. You just have to like uh, you know, roll up your sleeves, spit in your hands, and start you know uh, find some glue and start you know putting stuff together. And uh, so I think that 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 you know. The, the money falling through was actually one of the best things to happen to me. Mm -hmm. uh, at the mm -hmm. time, it felt like my whole world had just collapsed. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being one of the best things ever because I think the movie actually ended up improving. And, and what I mean by that is because uh, the edit slowed down tremendously, it gave me time to like really think about it mm -hmm. um, instead of just being focused on, on getting it done and using money sort of as a band-aid, right? Of just gotcha. like, hey, here's the money, cut it for me, and then, you know, hey, you sound design it for me, it's over. Um, mm -hmm. But I think like doing it this way, even though I don't wanna do it this way again, <laughs> uh, going through it was, was very much um, like, so, you know, I went to film school, but that wasn't actually film school. Like, right. Right. this was film school, if that makes sense for mm -hmm. me. And so like, uh, because of that major setback, I feel like I went to film school again, because mm -hmm. I had to literally use every single trick in the book that I knew of, and, and didn't even know at the time to get the to get it done. Right. Um, at the end of the day, like having a, a half finished movie on your hard drive, isn't gonna isn't helpful for anybody, you know, so no. That was that my biggest goal was just to get it finished. Um, and you know, that I had to take the long way around uh, to do it, but it made me, I think, I think I leveled up as a filmmaker by mm -hmm. a factor of 25. Gotcha. Just from having to, to do it the, the old fashioned rugged way with no money, with paper clips and, <laughs> you know, and, in glue. Uh, but, but yeah, I made the whole movie on my laptop, you know, like mm -hmm. there, there's, there's not the, there's very few boundary, uh, like, uh, barriers of entry now to filmmaking. I mean, there's always going to be barriers, that's for sure. But, um, the barrier of entry is basically like, is your computer fast enough to run footage? You know what I mean? Like that's right, basically, right. as opposed to back in the day, it was like, well, you have to buy a Steinbeck now. And that costs up a billion dollars and you have to, you know, so at yeah. least now, you know, you can shoot something on your phone, cut it together on your phone and distribute it on your phone if you want to, you know, and that's, yeah. kind of, that's freedom in many ways. And, uh, during these COVID times, I've been trying to re remind myself that like, we are all empowered, even though sometimes it may feel like we're kind of like trapped, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. cause like, uh, I mean, I don't know uh, how the cases are in, in Arkansas, but here in California, they're crazy high, you know? And so everybody is very much like, like pretty much like uh, still in quarantine mode. Um, yeah, but, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's up there here. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. We're kind of wondering, you know, what's going on, you know? Nobody wants to stay in to themselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like sure. some people, you know, not picking on anybody, but some people's like, like, yeah, I may not be able to make it. I'm like, this is virtual, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, no, across the room, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, all of this, trust me, is virtual, you know, right, right, and, right, and everything. But yeah, and and I want to say this because I believe it is like a small delay between us and the viewers. But if you have any questions, please. Uh, pop it in the box and, and you know, uh, Justin or I, whoever it goes to, uh, we can jump on it. But, you know, um, <clears throat> definitely to close out, I definitely want to just address, like, the current situation and just wonder, am I the only one who kind of feels this way, especially, um, you know, you say you're still, like, pushing more so the indie route and seeing, you know, where it takes you. And, you know... You know, I was uh, I was uh, I, I talked to my wife about different things all the time, of course, and uh, and I was telling her how you know, I do feel like there is definitely um, 
an enhancement when it comes to accessibility for <clears throat> people of color uh, in film and being and like you said, like it's, it's easier now to make a film, you know, you, you know, Adobe even have it where you can edit on your phone, you know, um, and everything like that. And and we push for that uh, space and we and we push for, you know, all these things, representation, stuff like that. But do you feel like it's going to come to a point or has it came to a point, you know, in your experience, do you feel like we have to be very careful that we don't recreate the good old boy system amongst ourselves when it comes to um, the next generation of filmmakers trying trying to make it, you know, because um, uh, like, you know, like I mentioned, and you understand, like everybody from Arkansas is not going to be able to up and move to California. Yeah, it would be nice to be closer to where um, business is being made, but, you know, everybody's not going to be able to uh, make it out there. Everybody's not going to be able to afford to go to ABFF. Um, and knowing all these things is why I created uh, the uh, Arkansas Minority Film and Arts Association, you know, and um, and it's been proven that you technically don't have to be that close because you got someone like Ryan, I mean, not Ryan, but Morgan Cooper uh, with the Fresh Prince and everything like that. You know, he's from Kansas, you know. Uh, so do you do you kind of feel that we have to keep in mind to make sure that that door stays open? Um, or do you feel like um, that we're just, that it is just getting started and, and it will, the opportunities will continue to enhance. Hmm. I know I just, it was kind of loaded, but I would just want to no, make sure. No, yeah. Finish. Yeah. That's a, that, that's a, that's a rich question. <laughs> um, I, uh, man, I feel, and I don't want to come across as, as, anything. I don't know. I think that we are going to, uh, just as minorities, we are going to have to do everything we can to always make sure that the door is open. Um, because I think that, uh, I think that there are too many forces in society. You know how sometimes you open up a door and you'll, you'll, you'll push it open and it'll look like it's open for a little bit and they'll just slowly start going like this. I feel like that is America. <laughs> I, I feel like if, if a door is going to be open and people that look like us are running through, the system itself is going to try to shut that door. I, I, I believe that. <laughs> you know, um, no, I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, I think more than anything, uh, we have to just stay conscious and stay mindful more than anything. I'm just like, is the door open? Is the door still open? Cool. Okay. Let's keep it open. How do we make sure it stays open? Can we put a stopper under here? Can we, can we paint it? Make sure that, can we put a sign on it? Say, make sure you don't close this door. Like what can we do to make sure this door always stays open? Because like you were saying, dude, I mean like, you know, uh, birth of a nation is still in the conversation and it's a century old. <laughs> it's, we're only just now getting to the point where, you know, like, uh, you know, like, like Ava DuVernay, first black woman to direct a, uh, a, a movie that made over a hundred million dollars. Right. She's not the first black woman that has the talent to do. so. There've been plenty of black women in the past who have the talent to, produce a film at that level. She just now has the opportunity to do so. And now we have someone we can hold up and be like, hey, there's a model. It can be done. It's not impossible, you know? And more than anything, we just have to uh, lift each other up as much as possible, like celebrate our accomplishments and do everything we can to make sure that, that door stays open and to, uh, uh, stay positive. You know, it's so, so easy, especially now to, to think like, Oh man, my voice doesn't matter. My voice, uh, doesn't like no one's listening. Right. Well, the truth is, uh, like there is, there is a ton of noise out there, especially right now, but more than anything, our voice, like if you're ever going to speak up now is the time to do so. This is probably <laughs> the most, uh, this is the moment that shows what you're made of as an artist. You know what I mean? If you're a creator, like 
dude, this is the perfect time. I mean, like, there, there's problem after problem after problem. We are disconnected more than ever. Yeah, yeah. We, we need empathy more than ever. We need, yeah. uh, we need grace. We need peace more than ever. Like, now is the time to make something. You know what I mean? And uh, one of the ways we keep the door open is to realize that, like, oh, my gosh, we, we realize that, like, this thing in our pocket is, like, it is a – this is a full, this is a full on movie studio in our pockets. You know what right. I mean? Um, right. This is the stuff that, that made George Floyd go global. You know what I mean? Like, right. like this, even though like these devices uh, um, can divide us, they can also unite us. You know what I mean? Because exactly. Exactly. they are a reflection of ourselves, you know? Right. And so more than anything, um yes like uh we have to absolutely be mindful that the door could shut at any moment and and if we have the opportunity to hold the door open for someone else we sort of have to you know what i mean like uh it, it would be it would be a shame if if uh if a new door opens you know and and that's the that's the beautiful thing too is like there's not just one door there's a bunch of doors, you know, mm -hmm. and every every one of us can be a doorway into something great if we if we uh, treat it as such, you know. Right. Uh, but man, I I think that the systemic problems we have right now and they are great and they are are truly truly I think beyond anything that we've even experienced. I mean, they're going to be studying this time period for the next hundred years. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, right. Like this is the this is the craziest time ever to be alive. Uh, like yeah, and and I think that you know if if, if I if I may get very frank, um, at the beginning of COVID, I feel like I had an existential crisis. I I feel like I lost. I fell into a deep deep depression, and I feel like I lost almost all hope. And it took a really really long time for me to remember that. Uh, that that uh, that I think it's Alexander Descartes. I think it's like a philosopher. His thing, like I think, therefore I am. You know, mm -hmm. it's such mm -hmm. a simple uh, quote, but mostly what that means is like, hey, you're here. You have thoughts. You, which means you matter. You know, and more than anything, like now it's so easy uh, to look into the world and feel like your perspective isn't being heard, your voice doesn't matter, but you can make it matter. You know what I mean? Like, right. That, right. that's the great part. Like, like, like Joe, uh, I, I didn't mention this, but, but then there was Joe, uh, when I first got out of school um, and I'd written the script, I'd, I'd sent around to some of my friends and uh, it somehow made its way to a couple executives, um, and uh, they were wanting they were wanting me to actually uh, make the movie in a more, I guess, legit way, if you will, like more through the system, mm. and uh, and they wanted me to change the family, and they wanted me to make the family into a white family, and they wanted me to uh, to make it more this to appeal to this demographic and things like that. And, and I realized like if I was going to make all those changes, it would no longer be my story. Like it's someone else's story at this point. And I feel like if you more than anything, if you're going to make a, a, a film and, 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 you know, filmmaking is super difficult. Like you at least have to be passionate about the idea to sustain you through how hard it is. To, to bring it into existence. And so um, like they wanted me to, to turn it into something else. And I was like, oh man, uh, I think the only way this thing is going to exist is for me to try to open up a door or to, to get, my, get my friends together and find our own door and open up that door, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so like, I think that we are always it's probably going to be 
the the struggle of just being a minority in America. We're always going to have to have to find a different door when a door shuts in our face. And so right. we cannot ever ever take a shut door to be a sign or a symbol that uh, that something has been denied to us. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, right. We have to look at a closed door as like, okay. Let's go under it. <laughs> Let's go around it. Uh, right. Do we have a helicopter? Can we? Can we? Can we fly over this thing? You know what I mean? Like, right. Right. We're always going to have to do that. I think collectively, just as my as minorities. Uh, but you know, uh, I I don't know. Um, I I think we've just always got to be vigilant, no matter what. Yeah. But I think that that. Uh, that things are moving forward though. I do think we are making progress. Uh, we are backsliding, but I think overall in terms of the, the arc of time, I do think we are making progress though. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, I feel the same. I feel like we're making progress, but we're making progress in ways that are not, it's more mental. You know, I was, I was thinking about the other day, you know, um, one of the main goals of the slave owners was it's a lot of things that we hear about aware of like that but to me collectively they took the love out of us mm -hmm. they took the love out of us loving one another wow yeah you know, they took the love out of us appreciating our true history mm -hmm. um they they took the love out of us man and 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 i feel like that sums up a lot because literally the moment that, especially like 2017 to now, the moment that we started loving each other a little bit more, that's when the snake fell threat. Absolutely. And started hitting the fan. Absolutely. You know, we started like colorism, that whole issue is starting to die down amongst us. And I love that, you know, the appreciation and the uplift of the small businesses, the black businesses that are building up, that is starting to be appreciated more now. And it's just funny, the moment that in, in, in totality, the love amongst us started growing, mm -hmm. that's when they started hitting the fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And yeah. and yeah and and so that's that's what I'm big on and and, and what I created out of this is, is truly uh, out of love because you know it would eat me up when someone would direct you know someone in grad well in undergrad or whatever or high school that's want to become a filmmaker towards me and it's like I can only get you to right where I'm at and I trust and I promise you I can get you way faster to hear than I got here. And then that's still, I'm not going to say it wouldn't be enough, but there's so much more that you can be that I can't even give you because the location that we're at, um, how hard it is, as you know, for those, those who are from Arkansas, that's there now to get them to come back um, to do more, you know, and, and, and not only those that come back, but those who can relate to us the most, because we do have, uh, people of color, like especially black people, especially on the acting side, they're there, you know, but it's more so building that connection back and making them want to be proud of being from the South because it is hard to claim the South. Like I get it, you know, and and everything. But but yeah, like um, I'm just big about uh, continuing that love uh, across the board, you know, paying it forward and and, ju and just remembering remembering when you was in that situation and and also just ask yourself like why am I doing this like yeah you may want to do this one film that just came to mind last week but you know is it just a film you want to make or do you or could you or do you want to take a chance on you know that young woman or that young young man that may have something that you can be a producer for or mentor and it can go you know, like why? Why are you doing it? The why of things, you know. So, absolutely, and and it's it's easy to lose track of why because there's so much yeah. noise now. And you know, I was talking about um, about simplicity. Um, I I've been I've been trying to consolidate my best ideas, kind of mm -hmm. like in one place. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, forget them. 
You know what I mean? Because like everything is so scattered now, you know what I mean? Like, like if I have another inbox to check, like I'm going to lose my mind. You know what I mean? Like there's so many, there's so many things beeping at you and buzzing at you all the time. You're like, ah, oh, no, you know, but I'm, I, I'm to the point now where it's just like, oh man, no, no. Like, like, uh, yeah, exactly. What is my purpose? Why am I here? What is the struggle for? Like, what's it for? You know what I mean? And like, when you know that, it's weird. It like gives you, it gives you uh, like an energy reserve you can always come back to. And, and it just regenerates itself all the time when you constantly remind yourself of your purpose. Um, so yeah, man, that's, that, that, that's awesome, dude. And, and everything you're doing with, with, with this, with this festival and stuff like that is, is awesome, man. We appreciate you uh, lifting, lifting up voices and, just awesome. It's awesome what you're doing. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, you know, you're definitely one of those uh, indie trailblazers for us. So I definitely, you know, I appreciate you for pushing through because thank you. Thank you. I remember when you was um, during the Q&A at your screening, um, you was mentioned about like, man, like at one point I didn't think this was going to get done. And, you know, but I just kept on pushing it. Then my wife, he like, ah. He <laughs> gave me that much. Because like I said, like within those four years, that's when your thing came about. So between you and, and others, you know, I just appreciate you pushing forward because it means something, you know, it, it truly does, man. And 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 I definitely this does not need to be the last time we connect. Cause I, I believe um, you know, there's a connection here, and I truly feel that this can go somewhere and we can we can really make a, a great impact, you know, for our community and, and whatever else God has for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Cool. Well, you have a good rest of the day. I know it's nighttime here, so it's almost slow. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, I really do appreciate you. We appreciate you. And uh, if, if you ever need anything or if you have anything in mind, please reach out to us and, and, uh, and you have a good one, man. You too, man. The pleasure's all mine. Thank you. All right, man. Peace. All right. Take care. All right.